Hello, my name is Ilya Semenov, and I will be presenting our paper, ArcGeo, localizing limited field of view images using cross-view matching. Our group is from Blue Halo Labs. We focus on AI ML work for government projects and have a team of about 15 people specializing in geospatial machine learning. We are joined by Nathan Jacobs from the Washington University in St. Louis. The problem of image geolocalization is if given a query image taken somewhere in the world, find out where it was taken without metadata or location priors. The challenges include a very wide variety in image content, as well as a large search area. At Blue Halo, we are focused on a global scale. We approach the problem through cross-view image retrieval, where we try to match the image taken on the ground with a satellite image of its corresponding location. There are other approaches, such as landmark identification or topographic feature matching, but this is the one that we focus on. There are a number of existing works in this field. Many focus on bridging the perspective shift between ground and satellite views. One result of this work is the polar transform, which cuts and unwraps a satellite image as if you were standing at its center and taking a panorama. Some of the limitations of existing work include a reliance on orientation priors or knowledge about the view direction of the ground image, a limited scale of training data, both in geographic diversity as well as the number of images, and a reliance on matching 360 degree panoramic images. In the wild, photos are usually taken with smartphones or handheld cameras and have fields of view between 20 and 100 degrees. This makes models trained on panoramas ill-suited for common images. We focus on the CVUSA dataset because of its broad geographic coverage, the fact that it's well reported on so we can compare our methods with other ones, as well as the existence of a large set of supplemental data. We focus on low field of view images, which in the context of the CVUSA dataset means cropping the panorama. In this example, a 90 degree field of view means that we take a quarter crop of the panorama. Because the view direction is unknown, the location of this crop left and right is randomized. Our contributions are a novel ArcGeo loss function We've also established new state-of-the-art performance on several benchmarks, including the challenging low field of view test cases. Also, we've quantified the improvement that can be achieved from pre-training with additional data. Our method takes an aerial image and a ground image as input. We use the polar transformation on the aerial image and pass that into a two stream network with an aerial and ground branch. The extracted features are then passed to multi-head self-attention blocks with shared weights. The idea of the shared weights is so that similar features in both perspectives, such as buildings or road layouts, will be given attention to by the model, which will be conducive for matching. The output of these blocks are embedding vectors, one for the aerial image and one for the ground image. And we perform matching with these embeddings by measuring the cosine distance between them. The smallest cosine distance indicates a match. ArcGeoLoss seeks to optimize the embedding space produced by the model. It does so by considering the embedding of an anchor image, in this case, a ground image, a positive sample, which is the embedding of a matching satellite image, and negative samples, which are the embeddings of non-matching satellite images. ArcGeoLoss uses a softmax formulation in a very similar way to ArcFaceLoss, which revolutionized the facial retrieval field. Arc face loss calculates the distances to class centroids. However, in our case, there are very few positive samples per class, 
or unique location. For this reason, ArcGeoLoss calculates the distance to the embeddings in the batch directly. By using these distances, ArcGeoLoss is able to optimize the embedding space in a batch all manner, considering all of the embeddings in the batch, pushing away the negative samples and bringing the positive sample closer to the anchor. Now let's go over some of the results of our model. First, let's take a look at qualitative results. Here you can see some real examples of correct matches by our model at various fields of view. You can see in that second row, all of the retrieved satellite images prominently feature forests. And this matches with the forests that can be seen in the ground image. This indicates that our model embedding space does have some semantic consistency. Next, we take a look at the results with various backbones. We can see that with a large backbone, such as BEIT, our model achieves state-of-the-art performance on the CVUSA dataset with panoramic images. Pre-training with the supplemental data provides a 3% boost, allowing our model with a smaller backbone to exceed the state-of-the-art. This benchmark is becoming somewhat saturated as most models are achieving well over 90% recall at once. Panoramic images are easier to match and not as applicable to real world applications. For this reason, we focus on low field of view. When looking at the results on low field of view, we can see that our models achieve state of the art performance with or without negative mining. In this case, we are looking at our model trained on 90 degrees field of view and being evaluated at 90 degrees field of view. And our model pushes the state of the art metric from 30 all the way up to 44%. However, that's not all. Our model trained at 90 degrees field of view still outperforms other models at 70 degrees field of view, despite the fact that those other models were also trained at 70 degrees field of view. This applies also to larger fields of view. Our model, again, trained at half the field of view as the other models, is still outperforming them. Perhaps most surprisingly is that the additional data provides a very significant boost at low field of view scenarios. Here we see that the supplemental data shows at least a 20% increase in recall at one across all of these test scenarios. Next, we take a look at the results when isolating the impact of our ArcGeo loss. Common retrieval losses, such as triplet loss or arc face loss, may underperform when there are very few positive samples, such as in the case of image geolocalization. On the other hand, our ArcGeo loss provides at least a 10% increase in recall at one, regardless of whether or not an orientation prior is considered. The ArcGeo loss function is beneficial for various fields of view and training configurations for image geolocation, making it very versatile in this field. So in conclusion, we have introduced ArcGeo loss which enables the optimization of the global structure of the embedding space by approximating it with all of the examples in the batch. We have targeted low field of view cross view geolocation performance and increased the state of the art metrics from 30% all the way up to 44%. Finally, we've quantified the effect of training with additional data. This increased that same metric further from 44% all the way up to 66. Thank you for your attention.